Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. In today's episode, which is going to be very special, we'll be talking about QS const or std colon colon s const. And I'm not going to do it all by myself this time. I've invited in Giuseppe D'Angelo, also known as Pepe among his friends. And uh, stay tuned. Okay, welcome, Pepe. Hi, Esper. How are you? I have a problem. I hope you can help me with this problem. The problem is QS const. Ever so often when there's code reviews, people tell me, yes, bro, you forgot QS const. And uh, now I have one more enemy named Clacy have started also saying this. And I guess it's about time for me to figure out what is going on. Can you tell me when do I need QS const and why do I need it and all of these things? And maybe let me just show you some code here. Uh -huh. That this code is an example where Clay C and, and uh, my coworkers tell me to add QS const. Why do I need QS const there? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, what's happening behind the scenes, and uh, that would allow us to understand why QS const is needed. So uh, Clay Z is complaining there uh, regarding a very peculiar interaction that we have between the uh, C11 for loop that you have over there, and uh, a Qt container, in this case, Qstring list, but, but this discussion applies to any Qt container. So what is the problem with that code? What is the potential problem that Clazy is warning about? Uh, the Clazy is warning that that code written like that could perform a hidden copy of your container. So if you've got a container and that container is full of data, uh, maybe you don't want to pay for that copy, right? That sounds inefficient. And that's what cool. crazy. Why would I need a copy here? I mean, I just take my container and I run through the container. There's no copy in here. Exactly. Right. It looks like there is no copy, uh, but there could be a copy. That's what I was, that, that's what I was referring to with uh, this very strange interaction. Uh, it all boils down to the fact that uh, cute containers are implicitly shared or as we say, copy on write. Uh, in a nutshell, right. that means that inside each and every Qt container, there is a little number, a reference counter. And every time you try to modify a container, uh, the first thing that Qt does is check the number. And if the number is bigger than one, then Qt does a deep copy of that container. Uh, we refer to this operation as a detach of the container. OK, so what's happening there is that that code written like that could detach. That's the kind of warning that Clay is giving you. And since it looks like that you're not modifying that container in any way, right? You're just iterating over the string list. You're just printing the strings. Clay is getting a bit suspicious that, OK, so you're taking a copy of the container, but you don't want to modify the container. So why are you taking the copy in the first place? Uh, hold, hold, hold on a second here. You're saying that it could detach. I, I don't. Where on this particular line does does it even have a chance to detach? I don't get it. Yeah, it's uh, it's not visible, but it's like behind the scenes. It has to do okay. with the new for loop. Uh, how is it implemented, or to say it better, uh, what is it equivalent to? Uh, do you know what okay. the new for loop expands to? Double quote when the compiler sees that and compiles it. Well, for for loops has always been about iterators, right? So you get a, an iterator pointing to the first element, an iterator beyond the last element, and then you iterate through. So I assume some iterators, and then the whatever I'm pointing to is copied into my reference, or it, I get a reference, a Q-string reference to that element that is pointed to. Am I even close? Yeah, you're very, very close. Uh, and indeed, you okay. basically told the answer. So it has to do with how do we precisely get those iterators. So given mm -hmm. an arbitrary container, we know that we get uh, these iterators from the beginning and the iterators to the end by calling begin and end on that container, right? Now, mm -hmm. if the container is non-const, those operations are operations that do the little game I was playing, uh, that is, go inside the cute container, check if the current counter is bigger than one, and if it is, detach. So the very act of calling begin and end uh, which is, by the way, done inside for. So as you said rightly, it's not visible, but it's there. Uh, the mm -hmm. very act of getting those iterators could detach. 
interesting. Which so so what is the cure? Jasper, 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 what is it with you and uh, 80s rock bands from Britain? So we know <laughs> what the cure is, right? <laughs> this is the cure. Uh -huh. That's the cure indeed. Okay. But in more in the context of, of this stuff here, okay. how do I solve that problem? How do you solve this problem? So as I said, uh, the, the key aspect of this is that that code is calling begin and end on a container which is non-const. Okay, mm -hmm. so the simplest approach is we have to make that container const somehow. Okay, so we could, for instance, take a copy, a const copy, of course, or a, even better, a const reference to the container just before. Something looking like what we have on the screen here. Yep, processes like that, right? So you're taking a const copy or a const reference to the container. Now, mm -hmm. taking a copy is cheap, given this is a cute container. So as I said, uh, the act of taking a copy, all it does is simply incrementing the reference counter. Uh, if you take a const reference, you're not even paying for that. But now the key aspect is that the for loop is acting on a const container. So the okay. begin that it's going to call, it's going to be the begin overload for const containers, which doesn't detach. Since you have a const container, there is no chance for you to modify the container because it's const. So there is no need of uh, detaching at all. And indeed, this will suppress the warning from Clazy because you cannot detach anymore. I don't, I don't like where this is going. So I had a very simple for loop. Well, actually, I had a, a, a for loop with the iterator begin and end that looked like, like, like puke. And now I got this uh, simple for loop. And now we're going back. I need to create a copy of this, you say. It, that got to be some, some better way. There are, there are better ways, of course. Uh, there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, the first thing you could do better is realizing that the entire print function uh, actually doesn't need to modify the this object. So you could mark mm -hmm. the entire method as const, and that would, okay. as, a by, as a byproduct, make the member mList const, and so you're good to go. Uh, that okay. would be okay. the best solution, but of course, it's not general. Maybe you also need to do something else inside a function that modifies this. So mm -hmm. what's what's the second best solution? <laughs> That's using something like Q as const or equivalently standard as const uh, on top of your mList object. So you can pluck and that code. That's what we see on the screen here where the m underscore list has been wrapped in this Q as const. That's right. So. Uh, QS const or standard as const, they do exactly the same thing. The, just that standard as const is C plus plus seventeen. If you're not having, uh, if you're not on seventeen just yet, you can use the Qt version. Uh, what they do is simply giving you back a const reference to that container. So now, so, what the for loop so sees. So this is. So, sorry for interrupting you. So this is this is basically telling the compiler something. It's not really doing anything on on. It's it's just. It's just like a, a, a static cast or a, a const cast, right? Uh, that's exactly what it is. It's just taking the M list, adding a const on top of it. So it's just a manipulation of the type, something that just done for the purpose of the compiler. And then, of course, now the compiler knows, oh, wait a second, the thing I get out of the QS const is, of course, a const QString list reference so that uh, uh, I can call only the const begin and the const end and those calls will not detach your container. So it doesn't cost you anything at runtime. This thing does not generate any additional code or anything of that sort. It's, it is purely, as you said, a type manipulation done for the compiler. And of course, I already tried this at home, and I went through my, my millions of lines of source code, or however many they are, and I just search for all my for loops and I put QS const around anything that had a for loop in there. And uh, the first um, line more or less I tried to, to modify uh, looked like this. And where you can see that I'm not iterating over an instance variable or a variable that I create, but I have a method that generates me this thing and uh, iterating over that. And it didn't like QS const around that. Can you explain to me why is that? Uh it is a bit complicated because it's got to do with the uh, C++ rules around what exactly you can fed, uh, you can feed into QS const. So for 
a very complicated series of reasons uh, you're not allowed to place stuff like function calls or similar inside uh, QS const or equivalently around uh, inside uh, standard S const. Uh, you can't do that. It is actually a good thing that you can't do that because otherwise your program would crash at runtime. So unfortunately for this specific use case, uh, there is a better solution than you have to have a local. You need to declare as a local queue string list somehow. Of course, make it const because that's the purpose of the whole exercise. And then pass this uh, local queue string list into your for loop. Okay. Uh, I know that you're going to tell me about some how to do that in C plus plus twenty a bit ahead of of uh, the game here because let me just get it. I just I just don't get it. If we look at that code here, I return the queue string list, and then the the uh, that gets into that variable there. There can't be anybody else that has that string list. Why do I even have the problem of uh, why do I have this problem to start with? Uh so you are correct in that case. Okay. In that case, you as a human being can reason on the code flow and think that, okay, that Q string list is not shared. It's reference counter is going to be one that cannot detach. Uh, that's right. But that's why this is a warning. This is just telling you that this could detach. Uh, you have to remember mm -hmm. that in the general case, your generate function could not be returning a brand new Q string list. Maybe it's returning uh, a Q string list that you have elsewhere. So in that case, that return from generate would implicitly increase the reference counter of your QString list. All right. This is all about not the QString list you have in your hand at this moment. It's about the data, the reference data of that QString list. If that reference counter is bigger than one uh, and can quickly build a counter example that uh, have as generate return a list which is alive elsewhere. So in that case, mm -hmm. you would detach because inside your for loop you would have a queue string list with the reference counter bigger than one now clays of course does not have a crystal ball it cannot predict what your code is going to do so it's just warning you that telling you this code might detach there is the possibility and it is actually a fairly concrete possibility uh, given the fact that uh, typically when dealing with cute containers we always return them by value all right so mm -hmm. as soon as i refactor my code as soon as i as soon as I say something like my string list has to survive the generate method, maybe I want to cache it, maybe I want to save it elsewhere. Now the reference counter is going to increase and the warning will be actually a good warning. It's actually telling me the truth. Mm. This will detach at runtime. Okay. Okay. I I still don't like that that idea that I need to create a temporary just to fulfill the requirement of the for loop and so on. So I played a bit around with it and I came up with this idea of my generate method instead of just returning a, a Q string list that it should return a const Q string list. That way, when I call generate, it will get this const Q string list mm -hmm. and uh, it, it works. So am I a genius or will I burn in hell? And if the latter, can, I, can you at least tell me why I burn in hell? Um, okay, let me just say in general, you shouldn't be returning const things from functions, uh, especially const containers. Uh, the whole idea uh, behind this rule, don't return a const container, is that uh, you're going to break move semantics. Uh, C11 mm -hmm. introduced move semantics, uh, which allow you to optimize in general uh, the return from functions. So when you get a value, a temporary built from a return from a function, you can then move from that temporary into, let's say, a local object. Now that move gets broken if your return is const because you cannot perform the move. You're going to perform a cop instead. Now, in case of Qt containers, you can get away with that because as we're discussing, copying Qt containers is not particularly expensive. Uh, all that you do really is increase and degrees the reference counter around. So as a practical workaround, that could work. Uh, but concretely, for instance, the moment that you decide, all right, I don't like Q string list anymore. Let me make that uh, a standard vector of Q string or maybe something more complicated, a standard deck, uh, some non cute container of any sort. Now you're going to pay a lot uh, for that const because now not moving a standard container, but copying it is going to cost you a lot. So, so I'm going so, to tell so you, basic... be careful about what you do, right? 
So basically, when I stand there at the borders of hell, I just need to bring my cute license so that the devil himself can see, hey, it's okay, I'm using cute, so I can return the cons container. But that, of course, brings me to, to the standard containers. You've been talking about cute containers all the time. Do I have this problem with, with uh, STD vector, for example? Uh, no, you wouldn't have this problem at all with the uh, standard vector. Uh, the reason for that is that standard vector and actually all standard library containers are not reference counted. They do not implement this mechanism. Uh, so amongst other things, this means that uh, a call to begin into a standard vector will never copy it uh, behind the scenes. And you'll be fine with that. You'll be absolutely fine if your generate function was returning a standard vector. Okay. And now back to the, the last part, C++20. KDAV, you were just a few days ago, got switched into C++20. So I am C++20 ready now. What would my code look like to avoid that extra line in, in C++20? So uh, a nice thing about C++20 as a kind of smaller convenience, uh, it added the possibility of adding an, an initialization inside uh, the range-based for loop. So this brings it slightly closer to the old for loop, you know, when you had always this, the first statement, the initialization of something, then the guard and then the increment. Uh, now this is just initialization and then the iteration. So you could write mm -hmm. something like this, which is appearing on the screen right now, to spare mm -hmm. you the having this variable around uh, for longer than the loop itself, right? Because that's the problem, that now you have a variable and of course you're going to call it TMP or some other non-meaningful name. And now you're going to have that TMP around in your outer scope. And of course you don't like that. So you can now confine that specific uh, const variable that you, that, that you uh, generate uh, just within the for loop. And that's great. Okay. So to summarize the whole thing here, QS const, I need that when I iterate in a for loop. That's the first thing. And I need QS const whenever I'm, what I'm iterating over is not const. It could be const because I'm in a const method. It could be const because I, it's a variable that I somewhere else declared as const. Otherwise, I need QS const, but I can only use QS const if it's an L value, that's something that has a, a local name, not the return turn type of a, of, a, of a function. If I have the return type of function, I could, if I had my cute license with me to hell, I could return a const container, but you argue that's not a good idea going way forward. Uh, so instead, if I can use C20, I would initialize it directly in the for loop. Is that about correct? That's about it, yes. Uh... If okay. you want to knock another couple of things on another couple of instances. So obviously, mm -hmm. all of this has to do with the fact that uh, your for loop doesn't want to modify your container. Okay. Mm -hmm. In all our examples, we were using just a debug or similar. We were just reading from the container. Clearly, if you do want to modify the container, then conversely, uh, you don't want to apply const at any level. So clearly, you have to be in a non-const method working on a non-const container. Uh, but the key aspect of this is that uh, your iteration variable will ha would have a different type. As you can see right now, you're taking a const qstring reference, but if you had the need of modifying the container itself, you'd be taking a non-const qstring reference. And that's good. In that case, you would not get the warning from Clazy because Clazy would detect, okay, you want to modify this container. And if that means a detach, that's all good for you. And finally, I know this. But, but wait a second here. If I have a container, no, you're right. I always get the detaching wrong. So just to paraphrase, so when I watch this episode myself in a, like, like two hours and I forgot everything, I have a variable. It is a container. That's another variable, complete different variable somewhere else. It's also the same container, but they, both of them point to the same thing. Uh, the same data underneath. Now, when I want to iterate over this container and update that container, that's where the detachment goes on. But I still, of course, have access to that container. So, yeah. So, yeah, makes Confused. sense, right? I won't be in uh, the next episode. Of <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah well did you have any last last uh, thing you want to say Oh, well, I mean, uh, you know that I am that guy in GitHub always looking at C++ Next and always telling people, you know, uh, yeah. using C++ older uh, costs you more in the sense that you will have, you know, fewer goodies from the language. You have fewer uh, in, uh, helpers from the language. Uh, and so mm -hmm. concretely writing code is going to be, you know, more awkward and more expensive as development time. So, uh, in that, on that note, I could also tell you that uh, C++ 23, there is also another solution that will also work for our values. But uh, that's for another episode, I guess. That's going to be uh, a while before KW Viewer is going to be C++ 23 up here. So, <laughs> let's uh, take that episode in a, in a couple of years. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, have you around and enlighten me on QS const and uh, to everybody out there watching this episode, please do let me have your comments in the comment section below. Is uh, would you like to see more of Pepe? Possibly him taking over all of cute widgets and more, so you're done with my terrible jokes and can hear his jokes about the QR instead. I don't know. Uh, anyway, thank you, and until next time, have a great time. Thank you, and bye bye. Would you like to dive deeper into C? Then have a look at our highly rated training courses on kdab.com.